quite understand why this pen is doing that. Why does this want to skip? Why does it do that, Pierre Gustafson? Should I just try a different nib in it, see what happens? What would happen if I take this one out and do a nibectomy, a nib transfer? Well, that doesn't write at all. Okay. Okay, now let's put this this one in the other one. seems to write perfectly fine in here. <laughs> the other one seems, sometimes you do that. You take a nib out of one and you put it in another and they both are happy. And you swap them back again and only one is happy. And maybe this is happy now, but it will be unhappy shortly. So in an hour, Less than an hour, I'll be chatting with, okay, it's now it's doing it, but this isn't filled with ink. So maybe, maybe it's just because it's not filled. I'll be chatting with Adventure Denali or Alicia, Alicia, I'll find out how she wants me to pronounce her name. And she's someone who I've been wanting to talk to for quite some time. And she has agreed to meet, meet me on this very channel uh, today. So stay tuned. And meanwhile, I'm going to get the pens that I want to write with her and draw with her. Um, sort of refresh my memory. That's what I'm doing right now. And uh, I think maybe I'll ask her about her love affair with Caveco. And see what how she answers that. And of course, as you know, there's no right answers in the pen world. Uh, there, at least on my channel, there's no right answers. There's just vague opinions. Okay, and I've got this one. I've been drawing with this one. This one has a very interesting sound. It has a, this, this pen has a sound like Mel Torme, the silent fall, fog, or whatever they called him, the gentle fog, or there's, um, Velvet Fog, that's what they called him. This has that sort of Mel Torme voice. Kitty, I can't help you. I know, Tina. Tina. What? Yeah. 
he's my cat is like the the Edward Gorey character from the mystery series, the woman that's on the parapet going, oh, oh, and her scarf falls off. And that's what my cat does. Tina, I don't understand you. You're, you're perfectly fine the way you are. There's no reason for me to have to chew the food for your, for you. I did find the caveco esque pen. I have two of them here. Well, they're, I mean, I've got a number of things that are caveco esque And if you put them all together and pressed a button, they might end up being a caveco One is this one, Sterling Overlay Waterman with a metal section. It's all dinged up. And one is one one is are these pencils, which are sort of short and very butch and um, no nonsense. That's Caveco like to me. But the other one was was this one, and it's a Chilton. And this one is a Chilton. They're both Chiltons. And they have a very long cap and a short barrel, but when you post them, they're quite long. And these are, these look the way they do because of the filling system they have. So those are the, those are the Caveco Esky, Eskian pens. Let's see if I can get a better light here. Because this is dark. Is there a way that I can find a better light? My house doesn't have enough photons in it for the both of us. Hey, you're here. Um, shall I start a brand new one? Or are we ready to go, adventure? Well, oops, copy the clipboard. Go for it. You're ready, you're ready, let's just go. Paste. So you click on that link, I'll invite you in. Then you turn off your YouTube so we don't get, uh, we don't get echoes. So click on that link first. And adventure, I've got a, not a bone to pick with you, but I just, I have, I have business to, to talk, to talk about, not business business, but you were looking for a barrel for a uh, Schaefer pen. And I wanted to talk to you about that, but you never got back to me. Okay, okay. Different browser. Sorry about that. Um, 
So adventure uh, is going to be my my special guest for today. And I need to first ask her how she pronounces her name, whether it's Elisa, Alicia, or Alicia. I can't think that there's another op option in there, but there might be. Let's pick some bones. Well, while you're downloading that, I can I can explain to you, you were looking for a barrel for a senior Schaefer because yours had broken in half. And as you probably know, it's not just always easy to just put another barrel in a section. They're not automatically going to fit. And I do have some barrels, but they're missing levers. But it appears, it seems to me that yours, you have the lever. But there's two different kinds of levers <laughs> that go in these things. One has a ring on the inside. The other one has a drill going through it. So there were a number of things that made me unable to just drop a, one of these things in the mail. Um, so maybe we'll find that out, but you probably already have one by now. They're, they're among the most common pens in the world. And chances are um, the barrel is anyway, not the solid gold lever. So she's, she's downloading a browser so she can come on board here. And hopefully there was an earlier glitch in uh, StreamYard where it crashed on me. And I got an email from StreamYard apologizing for the crash, saying it won't happen again, but I don't necessarily believe that. So I'm hoping that this conversation will uh, last. So we all can enjoy it if we don't see it live. Aha, here she is. Okay, add to stream. Okay. Did I did I did it right? <laughs> Hello. Hello. So step one, did you turn off your YouTube? I sure did. Oh good. So we don't have an echo. Now I don't know whether you need to know what I look like. I certainly don't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I can't rival I, I your your beauty is unrivalable, so uh, I I don't want to even try. Oh, but God. <laughs> um, are, do you want to aim your camera, or can you aim your camera down so we can see pens that you're? Have, uh, or? Well, actually, I could if I use my phone. <laughs> that will require a different setup, but I could certainly do that. Um, or we could just. Uh, I could be, you could be a talking head and I could be talking hands. <laughs> Should we what? synchronize head and hand? Head and hands. Uh, I did this once where there were two, I was over here, my head was over here and someone else's head was over there and I reached my hand across and he uh -huh. reached his hand across to make it look like we were combining. Uh, but I don't think we, I think let's just start this way and okay. see what happens. So first of all, Number one, did you ever get your barrel fixed on your Schaefer? No. Okay. Question I... number two. two. <laughs> yes, go ahead. You still have your, you still have the parts. I sure do. And so uh, does the lever have a ring around it or a pin that goes through? Let me just go get it, if you don't mind. Go, go get it. Okay. Hello, Kesh. I'm uh, I'm speaking with uh, Alicia, uh, whose last name I don't even know, but who um, is it? Alicia or Alicia or Alicia? Alicia. Okay. Um, and 
the uh, so the you should see a little pinhole on the side of the yeah i can you <laughs> this okay. terrible massacre um is the lever held on by a ring it looks like it and it looks like the ring has broken okay unless if so, they've never been complete so okay that's that's good that's one piece of information that I need to know. Okay. So uh, if I send you a barrel mm -hmm. that is missing a lever, you should be able to put that lever in. Okay. And that, because that lever should be 14 karat gold. Okay. Because uh, the band is and the clip is, correct? Yes. Okay. And that's a, it's a, can I see what the section looks like on the pen? Yeah. Okay, it's the so it's the more modern of the streamlines. When the streamline ori originally came out, it had a section that looked like the older uh, type. Yep. Mm. Very good. All right. Yay! At least I know what you need. Okay. Whether it'll fit is a different story. Right. <laughs> so. Oh, geez. Uh, I have to tell you that um, as a confirmed as a confirmed bachelor, which uh -huh. of course you know what that means, <laughs> I must say that I did fall in love with you when you talked about the relationship you were having with your swan. Do oh you yes, that? how is that relationship that. going? I have not pursued a relationship with that swan. You still have it though. I do still have it. So what what is wrong with it? That's a great question. I'm the I'm a pen whisperer. I will I will <laughs> I will make you love it. Well, you know, it's been so long now at this point since I've even done anything with this pen. Well, now it's time. So maybe it's time. Okay. So I have a feeling, I mean, I don't remember what what the problem was, but you didn't you 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 said that there was an issue with the relationship you were having with it and mm -hmm. was it scratchy i really wish i could put it into words and again this was a little while ago so my memory is a bit fuzzy but it was more of just a, an experience it didn't it didn't speak to you yeah i didn't feel all that inclined to use it like i did some of the others and it wasn't because it was scratchy or not okay. flexible enough. Or well, you know, you might find that after not using it and after trying out many, many different pens, uh, you may discover that that pen works for you now. Now, now it speaks to you. It's true. Correctly. So, um, you're, you're, your voice is fine, but your your visuals are breaking up from time to time. But that's that's okay, um, okay. Because the 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 uh, um, but I but I'm thinking that I mean one of the things about what you said about that pen was that it's it sounded like you had hope that a relationship could exist between mm -hmm. you and that pen. You weren't dismissing it completely. Correct. And so I think that's, I try to do the same thing with pens I own or pens I get on eBay. If I try out the nib and it immediately turns me off, mm -hmm. I, I'm disappointed, of course, but I try to think, okay, this pen was created and was owned lovingly, presumably by someone for many years. And they wrote with it and loved it there i must be missing something there must right. be some reason for it to to be the way the way it is mm -hmm. and it uh maybe it's just a pen that you write facts with you right. make a list of the stuff that's you're going to throw out from the attic you know yeah <laughs> so that pen has a purpose you just haven't just you haven't found it yet you're right i think 
I think I've had so many experiences in which I've received a pen and it's just instant chemistry that yeah. I don't have as much patience for the ones that need a little more pen yeah. because I expect it to happen right away. And perhaps that's my fault for having those expectations, but they, they... I think that that, that, that is a fault uh, in, <laughs> in whether it be going on a date or yeah. right. <laughs> looking, going to a movie, you know, you think it's going to be the best thing you ever saw. And it's, it's yeah. just another car chase movie. Yeah. that's two hours long. Are dangerous. So, so uh, what I'd like you to do your homework Okay. is to put ink in that pen and and write with it tomorrow for okay. at least 10 minutes and see, see if it <laughs> tells you something if it, if it tells you something different um there are some people here in the in the chat i don't know if you see the chat hello people uh but they might have a question for you or for us or for me um but i've been telling people i don't have thousands of followers like you have but i've been telling people that you're gonna you were gonna be on so they were looking forward to it all right did you did you uh think about the dinner party question i posed um, oh i read it just as i was getting home so i have not okay. the only well, person i know i would invite is my grandpa but okay. but that's as far as i got and if i could invite fictional characters well i haven't i haven't included fictional characters yet but okay. i think i think that might be a way to expand the dinner party because i think that would be fun all right or okay. maybe maybe you could invite peter o'toole if he shows up as lawrence of arabia <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh -huh. You have to be in that, yes. you know, because Lawrence of Arabia was probably a jerk and Peter yeah, O'Toole yeah. is probably a jerk, but maybe <laughs> the character was, was good. Um, well, that's helpful. The David Sachet who played Poirot. Oh, you want him as, as Poirot. Okay. Yeah. He'll have to come as Poirot. <laughs> when, when he, when he played the terrorist on that airplane movie. Oh, <laughs> I thought, no, no, I can't watch this. Yeah. This isn't going to work. <laughs> it just doesn't work and when you see uh you know fred mcmurray in in um double indemnity you know he's supposed to be a nice oh, guy mm -hmm. and now he's a bad right. guy yeah but anyway um so uh i enjoyed too your 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 love affair that you're having with Cavecos. <laughs> and I think I, I don't watch every single one of your videos or I haven't seen every single one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I heard that there was one that was stolen. Uh, oh, yeah. You, and you're you wore a black armband or something someone was saying for a, a week. <laughs> <laughs> but um, God, it wasn't that dramatic. <laughs> well, I Only think a morning I, cloak. I, I, I wear black. black. I, I wear. <laughs> I put a black wreath whenever I break a pen. Um, oh. But, uh, but you have subsequently have a replacement for that because yeah. I saw you talk about it with the other two Kaveki. Is that what's the what's the plural of Kaveco in? Choice you know, I've us. never even thought of it. I've always just said Caveco. The Cavec. Oh, no, the Cavecos, probably. The Cavecos. Well, yeah. it's a German company, right? Mm -hmm. So who's German? who speaks German in this room? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a plural. Um, the, but the Caveco, I, I had... Uh, Wasky squirrel visit me over the summer mm -hmm. last summer mm -hmm. and he brought a caveco with him and i really liked it i'm really? i'm i'm really an old vintage pen guy i don't mm -hmm. deal with modern stuff very much but there was something very utilitarian about that mm -hmm. pen that i really liked it's like which a one did he bring huh which one did he bring i don't remember it's on one of my 
channel, one of my things I could find okay. out. But what I liked about it was it just had a, a it looked like the pen verge version of a Jeep. Yeah. It's very <laughs> functional. There's no, yeah. there's nothing particularly pretty about it. It has that little thing on the cap, the mm -hmm. little Taveco seal, but that's really about the only decoration yeah. it has. And there was something really neat about it. So I, and I have a couple of pens that I brought that if they were to somehow mate, mm -hmm. uh, they might turn into a Caveco. Oh. So the first one Sweet. is is this one, which is a Waterman. It's one of the three top three that I said in my Apple Boom thing. Mm -hmm. So it's it's sterling silver, has a metal section, metal threads, and it's all dinged up. There's lots of little bumps and bruises. That's marvelous. Which is the warmth that it has. And I think yeah. that's what someone was saying you loved about the brass one that was gone was it mm -hmm. had it had be, it had achieved its patina. Yeah. And had all the memories of all the trips you've taken with it and all the notes you wrote. So this has that the battle scars of being used. Mm -hmm. Um also, these two pencils are very mm. much Caveco, Caveci like, mm -hmm. Cavecian. And Cavecian. Um, they're plain sterling. Again, I'm a sterling ophile. I like mm -hmm. brass too, but sterling I like. And um, I, when I bought this one, I can't remember which one I got first, I saw that it had a hole in the back. And I, I thought, oh, it's really too bad that it's missing its little ring. Mm -hmm. And then I bought another one and it had a hole in the back and oh. it was missing a ring. And I thought, well, what's going on here? And I discovered that this is a pencil sharpener. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that magnificent? That's amazing. So wow. you, you would unscrew this and then underneath it, underneath this ring are the leads, uh -huh. the extra leads. But you'd take this off and you'd sharpen your point uh, and uh, put it back. Beautiful. And there's just some something about this that that again seems like a man that normally designs uh, locomotives you know, made this in his basement. Uh -huh. he, so it was just this beautiful thing. But the other one, the other two pens that I have, same company. Wait, real quick. The pencils, those were made by Waterman as well? No, these are made oh, by okay. some British company. I don't know who. Okay. Uh, they're, they have British hallmarks on them. Oh, uh, If I can find a... One of these, <laughs> I might, and if I can get a, a photon in my house to cooperate so I can see. Um, uh -huh. Sterling Silver, Baker's, Baker's Pointer Pencil, Baker's made Pointer. in England, Baker's Pointer Pencil. Oh, man, those are great. So look that up. Yeah. So the other thing that, that was very Caveco like in vintage pens that I have are the Chilton pens. And you can see why it's Caveco like mm -hmm. because the cap is so long compared to the yeah. barrel. And the and so it's short er than you'd expect it to be. And but it's quite long when it's posted. Mm -hmm. And the threads are way down here rather than up here. And mm -hmm. that's because its filling system is oh, a touchdown cool. filling system. Cool. So it's it has to be this way, I guess. Yeah. I mean, they later changed it to, to be a different way. But when they came out with it first, that's just how it was. And this one you'll like. This will, I'm sure you have shoes and a belt to match this, a purse. Yeah, it's, that's uh, beautiful. It's uh, alligator or lizard leather wow. covered. 
and I've seen one of these that was has had ostrich. Oh my god! Uh, on it. Wow. But it was too expensive for me, so it yeah, remained in the in the um, at the in the dealer's tray. Have you ever been to a pen show? No. I need to. <laughs> well, you. I'm afraid what would happen if you if you were to go to one. I'd lose everything I own because I You'd would have to, you know, bring... <laughs> raise the funds. Yeah. But um, so your your pens. What are the per percentage between vintage and modern? That's a good question. Uh... You don't have to be with it. I mean, I 10%. think it's half and half right now. Half and half. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a way of determining how you would characterize each half? How I'd characterize each half? Well, in terms of how you'd use them or mm. what the differences might be. Oof. Are we, it, are we not having fun? Am I asking you oh, questions no, you... that are too hard? <laughs> it's just a question that I take very seriously, and I I want to be able well, to answer it. Well, you don't have to answer it now. I hope that we can talk again sometime. But yeah, um, I have to think about that. The it's it's mm. interesting. You know, I I'm. 99.999% vintage. Mm -hmm. um, and much of it has to do with the way the vintage nibs work, yeah. I think, so much more delicately than, than the modern pens. Uh, the fines seem to be finer, the flexibles mm -hmm. seem to be more flexible, and um, which I need in the work that I do. But, um, and even fountain pens don't do what my dip, my 14 karat gold mm -hmm. dip pens do, mm -hmm. uh, that I turn into Franken pens. So, um, oh, even, even this is a, this nib is from 1880 or so. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And some modern pens can can have this thickness, but they mm -hmm. often don't have that thinness. No. And yeah. it's that range that that the older ones have that the modern mm -hmm. ones don't, because uh, you know a modern pen man manufacturer would be, I think, afraid to put something out that was that flexible and that fine because mm -hmm. people would break it. Yeah. Immediately, and so. Um, but a modern pen, uh, they, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be afraid to be, use a modern pen with fancy glittery sparkly inks and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. uh, if they, if something goes wrong with it, it's not a vintage pen that's broken right. or clogged. Yeah, what is, what is your opinion or your stance on using inks, modern inks with, <sighs> you know, I am so fuddy duddy with, uh, ink. I'm, I'm 99% of the time I'm using a Waterman ink. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't need fancy colors. I don't need sparkly shimmery stuff. Almost everything I do. Um, uh, if I'm drawing something, it's going to be scanned and reproduced and engraved. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, black is perfectly fine. I am, when I do put peacock blue ink or ruby red ink or whatever ink, I, I am briefly seduced by it. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a seduction that doesn't last very long. Mm -hmm. um, but when I see you and other people use color inks, it's really quite lovely. I, mm -hmm. I like seeing the, the shading of the color. 
the light blue and the dark blue and the iridescent that it's something that's very nice, but it's mm -hmm. something that I don't, um, I don't need in the work that I do. Yeah. I like it to doodle with. I love to just sort of scribble and, and uh, let me just show you some of the scribbles that I would do. Um, if I can find the, Those are scribbles. <laughs> they're, they're, this is, uh, I call these, uh, I, when I do these live, I say taking a pee because I'm taking a pee. I'm making a pee. <laughs> I saw that and I thought you were letting your audience know you had to take a bathroom break. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you see, sometimes I, I will, I will, I will use color inks. Mm -hmm. These aren't peas, but they're, um, and I don't, I'm not one of these people that cleans out my pens or cleans anything for that mm -hmm. matter. And, uh, so the, the color always gets mixed in with whatever color yeah. was in there before. That's so nothing's re can, huh? That's really refreshing. Can we actually, I, I kind of want to ask you a question yeah. uh, because more, I guess you could say I characterize my how I characterize my vintage versus modern. My vintage pens are very precious to me. They're yeah. my beloved. I Each one has a very unique personality and it brings me to a different place and it has a different experience. And I cherish them and I prize them. Whereas my modern pens, I don't really care much about. I just toss them in a bag and go. But because I have that, I I, I miss using my vintage pens and I don't use them as much as I used to because I cherish them so much. And yeah, I really well, love I think... how you approach your pens and you don't clean them and you don't, uh, you don't baby them. I, uh, there's a few that I do baby, but, mm -hmm. and there's some that I'm, that have such beautiful nibs that I'm afraid to even use them. There's a Waterman pink nib I have a Waterman Ripple pink and one of them just mm -hmm. sold on eBay for 1300 bucks oh and I'm afraid of using it yeah. uh, because if I hit an invisible snag or mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. happens it, you know a good $1,299 of that, of that value is gone right. and so I'm a little afraid of using it but Every time I do use it, bring it out and I try it out, I think, oh, my God, this is spectacular. Mm -hmm. It's not that different from the dip pens that I was just drawing with. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what you could do, Alicia, is, you know, take your Kaveki out with you when you're backpacking and jumping around and playing catch with bean or whatever you do <laughs> outside um but when you're inside and you're mm -hmm. writing in your journal take out that swan or take out yeah. that schaefer or whatever it is and mm -hmm. in the privacy of your own desk where they're not gonna fall on the floor or fall off a cliff or mm -hmm. get swept away by the avalanche or whatever yeah <laughs> whatever they have in your neck of the woods um then you'll uh you'll you'll be able to cherish them and use them at the same time yeah and uh wise words have a and even if it's just making making out the grocery list or right. something when you're <laughs> in the house yeah yeah uh, you know maybe use the swan for that yeah you know it's a pen i don't like i don't like shopping but so this is what i'm going to use it for <laughs> that's a great idea i think also i i have a little bit of anxiety about having pens inked up that i'm not using regularly i just i feel like i need to be using them all the time or have them cleaned out and put them away for storage well it's i i often will use a pen and then sort of forget about it and go to, you know, I, I leave my desk here and I go to my computer and I'm working on that for a week or a month or mm -hmm. whatever. And I don't come back here because my calligraphy jobs and my illustration jobs have sort of gone away because of COVID. 
Mm. But uh, so I come back and I try a pen and I try to fill it up and the, it's clogged mm -hmm. because I left ink in it. Right. So again, at home, uh, you could simply dip the pen in ink. There's enough ink mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the feed and yeah. the pen to write your entire grocery list and mm -hmm. a note to Bean to clean his room and <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> and and a note to the neighbor and whatever else you want and then you if you run out of ink you dip it again and, mm -hmm. and but that way you don't have to and then just dip and don't it clean off the nib in between dips just well you don't have no don't have to clean it, it off okay. between between dips but at the end of the day when you're done with your list and you want to put mm -hmm. the pen away just dip it in water okay and you could dry it off or Mm -hmm. You know, but you don't have to. You could even flush it with water if you're very tidy. Mm -hmm. But um, you don't really have to fill the pen to if you're at home yeah. at your desk. Yeah. Just dip it. Okay. And uh, it'll make cleanup all the easier. Um, let's see if let's Dimitri. Uh, says i love the contrast in pen personalities <laughs> yeah also says and i think that the the pen certainly have a personality but i think that alicia and i are we are overlap our venn diagram in terms of how we appreciate pens is pretty much entirely overlapping yeah i think so too i you know uh the minute you tell me that your Schaefer pen has a 1937 band on it. I'll just remove you from my follow list or something. <laughs> because that's so boring. I mean, <laughs> anyone can tell you that. But, and it is vaguely interesting, maybe. But that's not what I like about it. You know, yeah. I, I, like, I like from, you know, here's the pen. Mm -hmm. I like from here this way. <laughs> That's the part of the pen I like, what it makes mm -hmm. and how I'm, how it feels to make that line. Yeah. You know, this pen be, is the same essentially as, where did it go? No, is this pen, except one is covered in sterling silver and mm -hmm. one is plain mm -hmm. with a missing clip and a, but and they're otherwise identical the nibs could write perfect the, the nibs could be absolutely identical let's say i cloned them mm -hmm. but this one is so much heavier because it's covered mm -hmm. in sterling silver so this experience of using this pen is very different than yeah this pen. yeah and a pen that's long is very different from a pen that's short and um so and i think you sense that when you're mm -hmm. using your pens i'm sure that there's a time when you feel like using that big modern ahab noodler noodler pen or whatever it might be mm -hmm. you know i don't do you have any noodler products I don't it only inks what do but you think about pen. what do you think about his inks uh <laughs> There, it's I'm I'm on the fence. There's a lot of things I like about them and a lot of things I don't. I like I love the the um, what is the tags, the labels. I love the label art. I love the okay. name. Yeah, he's <laughs> I've known Nathan, the owner of Noodler Zinc and mm -hmm. the chemist behind it. I've known him since he was in high school. And, oh wow. Or junior high even. Yeah. And he was he and I would buy pens from a man named Frank Dubiel. Mm -hmm. And we were each about an hour away from Frank. And when Frank would come home after a pen show, I would hop in my car and travel south. And Nathan would hop in. Well, he wouldn't. He didn't drive. His parents would drive him. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he'd drive north. And luckily, luckily, he loved Schaefer snorkels and <laughs> Schaefer pens. And I was indifferent to them uh -huh. and i loved flexible nib pens mm -hmm. so but nathan 
was on the internet buying and selling pens when the internet was only black and white and wow. only words. <laughs> and he and he had enough he made enough money selling pens to the Japanese when he was mm-hmm. in junior high school that he bought the house that he was living in from his parents mm-hmm. so they could move away. <laughs> That's amazing. A house of their own. So but Nathan's inks never dry. Yeah. And I don't have use for that. And he told right. me, he said, you, you use, you need to use shittier paper. And I, I'm not going <laughs> to, he wanted me to use paper that was very pulpy. And right. So Super it would suck the ink in yeah. to its fibers. And yeah. I said, I, I can't do that. Right. And they also yeah. are very thick. When I draw very fast and they wouldn't mm-hmm. keep up with me. Yeah. But I appreciate his, what he's doing. Yeah, I do too. I, you know, he used to say he wanted to make a pen that where everyone in the United States could own a pen and use a pen. That was his, his goal. That's Um, amazing. Does anyone have any questions for Alicia or I? I do see fav- someone asking uh, for favorite vintage pen. I don't know to whom they're they're asking that question. To. Well, they can be asking both of us. Uh, I you've already shown yours. I've shown <laughs> mine <laughs> on uh, all the time. I show I show yeah. the pens I have, and, but I think you know the one that that I love, and I hardly ever use it. Is this one? This one? Yeah. There's just something really nice about this. And I yeah. recently put a different nib in it than had been in it for a long time. And mm-hmm. I ended up loving it all the more uh, or all the differently. It was a different nib. Um, but uh, so, but I don't know if I can if I can actually answer that. I probably would have a flexible nib. Mm-hmm. It probably would be a sterling pen of some sort because I just love looking at a sterling pen. Yeah. It could be a wall. It could be a waterman. Um, what about you, Alicia? Well, I have to go get another pen that I don't have with me. Be right back. Okay, you'll be right back. I sort of was hoping she would be aiming down at, at the pens, but she's has such a win, winning smile that I'm happy to keep her uh, facing the camera. Okay. <laughs> you have your vintage pens in a cardboard box? No. <laughs> <laughs> Here, they're in a little case. Oh, I see. A zipper a zipper, case. zipper pouch. And definitely, I'm just going to look through them. I really love wall. Oh, yeah. Tulip clips. With, with the tulip the clip. Yep. Brightly colored celluloid. I love the nibs, the signature nibs that yeah. these both have. Um, and those yeah, two have that Caveco look. Because the cap is longer proportionally. Oh, interesting. Than, yeah. Or the never... red one, at least. I think, yeah. the, I think the green one is supposed to have a shorter barrel. I think, I think that that clip is, that, is a different. I think, I think the barrel should be short on that pen, like the red one. Oh, you're just personally, if you were to do No, I think I think it's meant to be oh. short. I th- and which is not dissing your pen, but it, <laughs> I think I think that that, that uh, clip came on a was or that cap was meant to go on a short pen. Interesting. And uh, uh, but what what's that one? Now that's oh, okay. another, that's well, I'm another... comparing it to another wall that I have in the oh. same size. Oh, okay. Well, but, maybe I'm wrong. But check it out. The cap on the this cap is shorter. Ebonite one is shorter. Okay. And the body is a little bit fatter. 
it seems. And huh. So are the, maybe are you're the, right. Are the caps yeah. interchangeable? Try to try to switch a cap. The the wall pen company they must have had micrometers on their lathes or something because they're so I can't tell until I try to put a cap on on the metal ones whether they're hmm. a number two or a three or a four size. So it, it does, does screw thread. on. It does thread, but it looks really. Yeah, uh, no, it's like, funny. I think it's probably be well. No, they're both long. You said. Ebony, you like the smell of hard rubber. I really do. I do too. I do too. <laughs> Good smell. All right. So no, are, it's, so that's I'm a beautiful right. pen. I love those two. I only have maybe one of them. In all the pens I have, mm -hmm. I. Um, they're really neat. Um, I also have some. Oh, the longer ones. Ooh. Okay, the vet. But so, see, those are the, those are the short. Oh, those are. Yeah, the juniors. Yeah, and they're the juniors. Parker juniors. So they are yeah. smaller. I, I love. Guess I do like that size. I like. I like the Parker. I prefer the Parker Junior to the Parker Senior. Me too. It's. Yeah. It. I like the stubbiness of the, the the compactness of the pen. Yeah, I I have two of the seniors, and I just I'm not a fan. I like that junior they're, size. They're a lot. really clunky. Yeah, they do. They're feel like a, a a a semi truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just they're, they're they're just too clunky. Um, this one <laughs> is also a wall. And it's sterling silver. Okay. And it has my favorite, well, one of my favorites uh, in terms of flexible nibs. It's okay. really Does it have nib. a silver section? No, a black section. Black okay. section, yeah. And a number two nib, and it just is a. It's a really beautiful writer. I like that one a lot. Now, when you post that, you have to post that then probably. Yeah. Because if you don't, you you it would be completely inside your paw. Yeah. <laughs> so, I sometimes Although, like, I mean, you could. I you sometimes know. like holding a pen inside my paw. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's kind of neat. Try it out. Just, okay. it's it's sort of a neat feel to have it sort of hidden in your hand. It's almost like you're writing with your fingernail. Uh, I'll have to try that. It's sort of a weird weird sensation but try it out you might yeah. you might kind of enjoy it do you have any desk pens no and i'm always looking for one in an antique store i feel like that okay. will be how i find a desk pen one day well i think you know finding a a desk pen on ebay they're relatively inexpensive mm -hmm. because people generally don't like them mm -hmm. Because you need a desk. Who has those right. anymore? <laughs> and um, and most of the time, people want the ones that have the elephants and the clocks and the thermometer <laughs> and the calendar and stuff They're like really that. Really elaborate. And, but um, just buying a plain uh, socket um, and. Uh, I think you might enjoy the idea of using a pen that, you know, is doesn't have a cap at all, but is yeah. a very long tapered uh, pen. I think you you might enjoy deciding where you want to have your fingers. Do you want it up yeah. here close, or do you want it further back? How do you normally hold a pen, like up here? Mm, yeah, very. Very close right to on the, the edge. I okay. Think. Um, and you, you, you find that your, your hand isn't in the way. Mm -mm. Sometimes people write like this, mm -hmm. you know, with a pencil or whatever. And how do they even see what they're doing? They have yeah. to put their, <laughs> their, their head on the desk. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, my favorite artist, uh, is Saul Steinberg. And I saw a video of him drawing with a dip pen. And he was holding it like this far back. Whoa. And that's how I hold a paintbrush. Yeah. And I okay. thought, well, why can't I hold a pen that way? And I, I couldn't with a regular pen because I'd be holding the cap and I'd be afraid the mm -hmm. barrel would fall off. But I could, if I was 
talented <laughs> draw or calligraph with and you are with this out here i mean but i normally i draw i sort of hold it mm -hmm. pretty far back so i can see around you know around the area that i'm drawing mm -hmm. and here i i mean some i, I move it all back and forth yeah. it's, it's never yeah. um i have 11 people that's pretty good for me all right hello <laughs> Dimitri is uh, from Canada, and he bought about six or eight pens from me, and he wants oh, cool. more. Um, and uh, it was all, he was, up until the vintage pens, he was a modern pen person. Mm -hmm. And so I sent him a selection of vintage pens and he ended up wanting all of them i cool. uh some were fine and firm some were fine and flex some were okay. various types um and then i sent you probably know minimal scholar on instagram no oh you should know him um he you and he would have a very interesting conversation, I think. Uh, his his name is M N M L Scholar, I think. M N M N L Scholar. M N M L Scholar. He has only modern pens. And he writes, ah. he, he writes uh, journals and mm -hmm. notes, and he uses different pens for quoting people mm -hmm. and different pens for footnotes on the notes he's making. And so he has <laughs> this, this, this very amazing, um, uh, system system of of writing and different colors for different things mm -hmm. and he um i sent him pens at the same time i sent canada uh dimitri oh, cool. pens and he sent all of them back he didn't he didn't oh, like really? a single one of them and, <laughs> and wait so, you're you're allowing people so you send pens and then they can try and then commit to purchasing yeah that's amazing well i i choose my friends carefully yeah <laughs> and uh i um i mean I, I usually will say if i don't know them at all mm -hmm. or if they're in another country mm -hmm. uh i might ask them to paypal me the amount in advance right. um, but uh sometimes i you know, have a sense that people are good and yeah. you, you, you are among them. If you wanted me to send you a pile of pens, I'd be happy to. Um, that would be a dream. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, but minimal, and someone said, well, I'm, I'm not surprised that, that he didn't want them because look at the pens he, he uses right. and the pens he buys. They're all mm -hmm. very, fancy looking mm -hmm. pens and the pens I was sending him were very plain mm -hmm. you know and I, I wasn't trying to I was mainly trying to send him a bunch of different kind of nibs mm -hmm. uh, for him to see if how they different they were from the modern yeah. nibs and maybe he didn't like them maybe he preferred a nib that was smoother or rounder or broader or mm -hmm. whatever um, uh, maybe the older nibs were too scratchy, but it might've been just that they were used pens and some people don't buy used yeah. clothes. They, right. they would never think of putting on someone else's shoes, but, um, but he, but he's still a very interesting character. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think you, you and he would connect on some level in terms yeah. of your journaling. So Melissa has joined us. Hello, Melissa. How many pens do we all own? Says 
Alito Escobar. Well, you can start your, you can come up with a, a within number. The, the nearest dozen. It'll probably be easier for me than for you, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, I have, in my house, I probably have five or 6,000 pens. That's a good number. <laughs> in, but in my collection, mm -hmm. I might have 3,000. And of the ones I actually use at any given time, it might mm -hmm. be 300. And yeah. if I had to only take so many on my lifeboat, mm -hmm. I could probably live with 50. Right. And they'd have to be very uh -huh. carefully chosen, not to be valuable, but it would be the nibs. I would yeah. say, okay, I need this nib because mm -hmm. it does this. And you need yeah. this nib for that reason. I have 6,000 pens in my house. Now, some of them are for sale. Some of mm -hmm. them are in parts that need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, so how many do you have, Alicia? Uh, over 100. That's a that's a very good number. I remember when I had <laughs> under 100. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm already, I'm overwhelmed with that. I, yeah, and I'm overwhelmed by how many more pens that I would love to experience. It's a slippery slope. Um, it, you know, I, I keep thinking about how I'm going to pare down mm -hmm. because I'm an old man and I'm not going to live forever. And my, I might need to sell some of these to pay bills mm -hmm. because my calligraphy business is sort of gone South. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, but I want my pens to go to good homes. Yeah. I just don't want to put them on eBay and have some, yeah collector put it in this case and never use it i i feel so sad when yeah. people show me a pen that has a price sticker and they get all hot and bothered about it and mm -hmm. I'm like oh, don't talk to me ever again i want to say to them <laughs> you know get it yeah I, that's my stepdad for a, a moment wanted to get into fountain pens because i was really into fountain pens and he thought it would be something that we could do together. Uh, but he's a collector of like coins and stamps and things that you, you, you just put look away. At. Yeah, yeah, and you just look at. So he had a really hard time getting past this notion of using them. And, you know, when I would show him the pens that I have and I've collected, he's like, you actually use those? Isn't that, that's ruining the value of them. Why would you do that? And it, it's just a really well, different, this, I, I feel like it's a disservice to these pens to not be used. Yeah. Well, that's what I think too. I mean, would you buy a motorcycle, rare motorcycle or car without turning the engine on? Of course you right. turn it on. Yeah. Now, do you need to lick the back of a stamp to appreciate <laughs> the, the Maybe taste you do. of the gum on the back? <laughs> And send it away to somebody else so that they can appreciate it. Well, you should. You should. Next time you're visiting your stepfather, you should say, you know, stepdad, whatever you call him. <laughs> Dad, you know, I found that the 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 best tasting stamp you had is the one on the upside down airplane. That was really tasty. <laughs> you know, does an Indian head nickel? sound different when it goes down the vending machine yeah. like you know but it took me a while to pry it out of that plastic case <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but i managed to do it yeah the sludge hammer worked fine eventually <laughs> and then i polished it off i figured and you I, didn't yeah and then i made it nice and shiny yeah <laughs> uh my grandfather was uh, collected stamps and collected coins mm. and my f he had a jar a mason jar or a couple of jars full mm -hmm. of uncirculated pennies from 1933 or some, yeah. some year yeah. when evidently pennies were rare. And mm -hmm. my, my dad bought essentially the house that 
we, we grew up in on the, on these pennies because they were so valuable. And uh, then he learned out later that the guy that bought them screwed them, that they were worth a lot more than he oh, paid no. for them. But, um, but anyway, I, not, not using a pen just seems wrong. You're not, you're not going to hurt the value of a pen if you put ink in it and use it. Mm-hmm. If you put ink in it and bring it mountain climbing, <laughs> maybe you might have a chance of ruining it. Mm-hmm. But, but um, anyway, uh, do you have any other questions for me, Alicia? I can't think of anything. Well, I, I am curious about what you have or are still kind of current calling your your career your job you've mentioned calligraphy and illustration i um i design wedding invitations and do calligraphy on wedding invitation envelopes Mm -hmm. and design monograms and i do i have a couple of clients that run a business in new york it's like it's, it's 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 an English business, mm-hmm. London, but they have an office in New York. And I am asked to do a uh, portrait of a house for to be engraved on the top of a mm-hmm. piece of stationery and stuff. And But the problem is I rarely get to talk to the client. I'm only mm-hmm. talking to the middle men. Mm-hmm. And they don't know how to answer or ask the questions the right way. So... I always feel I'm I'm creating something that's less interesting than they could have. Yeah. And often a lot of people want the boring, you know, view from front, you know, the front walk, mm-hmm. you know, with their big tasteless pile, you know, with the big <laughs> uh-huh. roof and, uh-huh. you know, the symmetrical things. And, they, and what would and, you like to give them? Well, I would love to give them you know, okay, if they have a big tasteless pile, you know, let's see it from the side, Mm -hmm. you know, where we, you know, where we see a completely different face. And this half is the same as this half. So let's include the tree covering that's there. They want me to cut the tree down, you know, to show their pretty doorknob and their picture window and stuff. And, and I say, you know, let's have the sun hit this way so the tree the shadow is cast on the house and so it's not just boring Mm -hmm. um but unfortunately these days the engraver wants these drawings to be produced in vector Mm -hmm. which means i have to draw on the computer right which is a pain in the neck because i i make a line and I always have to tweak it. <laughs> the computer doesn't quite make mm-hmm. it exactly right. So I have to, you know, go back and move part of it. Yeah. And it just takes 10 times longer. Yeah. But if they want me to do the boring view of the house, all I have to do is draw one window and cut and paste, 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 cut and paste. And, paste, cut and, paste and then I go back and add a couple of lines to make it look like I hand drew them. Don't yeah. tell anyone I did that, but it's, it is a, it is a way that I do it, yeah. but I, I design monograms and those are more fun. Mm-hmm. Um, How did you get into this? It was really through pens, through yeah. buying. My mother was a, did calligraphy for the church and my father had interesting handwriting. So I always loved handwriting Mm -hmm. and I loved uh, drawing and old fashioned D um, cross hatchy engravings I liked. Mm -hmm. So uh, it sort of always was something I enjoyed. Yeah. Um, And then uh, I sort of, I used to be kind of a full-time artist and then I bought this pen company 
and I started doing illustrations mm. for Penworld magazine. And mm -hmm. it, I had, I had been a sculptor before that, and I was mm -hmm. known for sort of what I was doing, and I was supposed to keep doing that. And and I would create an object that looked real, mm -hmm. but uh, it was life size, three dimensional, but it was made of paper. And um, I made entire rooms that you'd walk mm -hmm. through that everything around you was made of paper wow. and it was really 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 boring <laughs> and that when i started doing to me <laughs> and when i started doing illustrations for penroll magazine mm -hmm. i would i would say okay i can draw this pen coming down from this angle or i can mm -hmm. draw it from this angle or i could have a close-up and a perspective view coming at me like this mm -hmm. and I suddenly remembered how much fun it was to compose a picture mm -hmm. in a in a, on a flat piece of paper yeah and I thought oh this I've missed this I haven't done it in decades yeah. it seemed and then I started um uh doing some calligraphy for a company in my building that printed invitations mm -hmm. and then uh, I sort of stuck with it wow. um, and it's fun I, yeah. I really find calligraphing an envelope a joy it takes a minute mm -hmm. shall I show you yes Give me an envelope. Oh, shimmery. Yeah, we'll use a shimmery envelope. Whenever I use paper like this, I think I'm grinding down the iridium. Oh. So if I were to ask you your home address, would you tell me? Or you can make, make <laughs> one up. You can make one up. Make, make one up. I'll okay. send it to you, though. You can make up your last name, too, because... Okay. I, let's, and are you are you married? No. Shall I pretend you're married? <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> I like doing Mr. and Mrs. Okay. So, let's do it. Mr. and Mrs. Alicia Smith. Great. How's that? It's a perfect name. and Bean. Yeah. 2752 North Cactus Street Boulevard. <laughs> uh, what town do you live in? Tucson. T U S C or C S? C S O N. C S O N. It just doesn't seem right. Yeah, Tucson. Arizona. Oh. X Y Z one two. So, and people say, "Is that going to go through? Get through the mail? I can't believe that's going to get through the mail." It's the zip code that will mm -hmm. do nine tenths of the work yes yeah and then your mailman does the other tenth mm -hmm. how many how many letters do you get that your where your name is misspelled or your right. street is misspelled or mm -hmm. the number is wrong all of this isn't really important if you have the same mailman because he'll be yeah. able to figure it out so you uh, are a treasure I'm a treasure. You are a treasure. I feel well, very. You, you have to. Here. You have to write that in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I used to love doing these, and yeah. because it was sort of relaxing, I was able to bond with my, you mm -hmm. know, particular pen. Yeah. And um, sometimes I would get papers that would really love a pen, and sometimes mm -hmm. I had to work at it a little bit, but. Um, uh, I don't 
do them very often. I don't like doing place cards. And mm. place cards, I'll explain why in one second. Okay, where are you, place cards? Well, they're tiny. They're this big mm -hmm. or smaller. Mm. And I, when I normally do envelopes, I, I have a, a wooden uh, case that used to hold uh, cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. So I would just slip this into the little holder and it would just hang there and dry. And then I'd do mm -hmm. another one and slip it into the other holders. With these things, they didn't fit. They'd fall down and get mm -hmm. bent. So these take up my entire desk. And then I have to mm -hmm. let them dry and then put a mic together in the same order. Um, and I also don't like, there's not enough room for, yeah, it seems for crowded. having fun, you know? Yeah. And then they, they often want to have, you know, the full name, you know, Mr. Oh, gosh. Jonathan Livingston Seagull the <laughs> third and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's not fun. Yeah. I feel like I'm You're in a straitjacket. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. So, but the worst part is the fact that I, that it takes up, I have, I have to put this here and then I put the other one here and I put the other one here mm -hmm. and then I have to go do the dishes or something and let them dry yeah. and remember how to put them back in the right order. So, <laughs> so, uh, do you think you'd ever come back and talk to me again? Absolutely. And maybe and I, I'm sorry. It's taken so long to get. Well, this I, <laughs> I, 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 I knew that we would have a good time. Should I show my face and say goodbye? I'm, sure. I'm giving myself the third degree here. Let me see <laughs> if I can turn my camera around. How do I do that? I don't want to stop the camera. How do I turn my camera around? Settings. Front camera. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me just see if I can take this thing off the frame here without turning it off. Okay. Ugh, awful. Okay, let's go over here to another part of my house. If you hear me trip and fall and break my neck, call 911. Okay. <laughs> hope that doesn't happen so for those of you that are new well let me go back to the other camera here settings settings back camera Trying to find the Schaefer barrels for you here. They're here somewhere. Or not. Those, that's the parts area. Okay, I'm falling, tripping, falling. <laughs> Fuck. Oops. Wall. Let's see, do I have a turban? I don't have a turban. You've got three turbans. I don't have a single turban. <laughs> How is that possible? How is it possible? No, I, I think I do have a turban.
Do you see a turban there? No. God damn it. <laughs> I'm like stretching my head to see more of the drawer. It's not going to help, obviously. But <laughs> um. Bob, I just drooled all over my laptop. Okay. Sterling overlay. Do I have a photon in this house? What is a photon? You've, you've a photon is a ray of light. Oh. <laughs> they, okay. That joke. I have, I right have lots of lights, but they each give out <laughs> maybe. There we go. Sterling overlay Waterman's. Pen and pencil sets. Mm hmm. Maybe there's a turban. I seem to remember when you made that display. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then you put some in frames, right? In picture frames. I put some in picture frames, yes. I don't know where they are. They're here <laughs> OK, let me go back. Um, yeah, this was, this was, uh, fun. I, it would be interesting, uh, Alicia, if you have an idea of how we might, uh, um, continue a conversation on your channel where yeah. you're set up. I'm using StreamYard which okay. you can use for free mm -hmm. um, if you use a certain number of hours a month. Okay. If you go over that, then it's cost $9 a month or something. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can save them. I mean, right now we're live and this is mm -hmm. going to be saved on YouTube, but you can, only record or publish it later you don't have to you know be live immediately and have mm -hmm. have it go out there you could decide later on that mm -hmm. what i said was scandalous and you don't want to <laughs> <laughs> but um i think um i think it would be fun also for you to pull in other people that okay. think the way you think about the ukulele or the pens and okay maybe we can play a, a duet next time on the ukuleles that would be fun <laughs> although probably tricky to have it synced up perfectly i don't know well we, yeah. we, we'll play around yeah <laughs> it doesn't have to be <laughs> doesn't have to be sunk perfectly time it perfectly so that it's around yes <laughs> um, but this was really a lot of fun and, and yeah. maybe next time too, we can work it out. So we're both facing, have the camera facing down. Okay. And you can use your phone to do this, except that the phone is so tiny right? Uh, that it's hard to see yeah. what you're supposed to see, I guess. So I'll come up with something. Any other, how, any other, how do you feel if, if I had you over on my channel and we did like a live session like this and uh, maybe you could teach me some calligraphy or how oh, you, sure. you move so freely and okay. in it, you know, I would love to learn how to just. Oh, great. That sounds wishes. like fun. No, I'd be happy to. Um, do you have a, do you have an iPad? No. You don't. Um. I find the iPad is good for me because I can see really mm -hmm. well on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the bad part is it's, you know, this big. Right. And it's right in between me and this point. I can't mm -hmm. see my real hand. I can only see my hand as it's 
on the camera. But the, so a camera that's above your desk is, but you want to be able to see me and your right. desk. So yeah. using a, you have to have the camera, the, the phone or something below your oh, eyeballs. That would be kind of awkward. But, yeah. and you can do that with a phone. You can do that yeah. with an iPad too, but it's just, um, but I'd be happy to do that. It'd be fun to, uh, to give you sort of exercises. Your, uh, a helpful hint right now would be um, get paper that does not have lines on it. Okay. And start writing your notes uh, five times bigger oh, <laughs> than you normally yeah. would. <laughs> okay. Where you move your entire arm. Okay. Don't move your fingers. Don't do mm -hmm. that. Move your okay. entire arm. And that's that's a good way to, to get used to uh, flourishes. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. And that goes for you and you and you and you and you and all of you people in the room. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't go for you though. You over there, writer. you're just a hopeless lost cause. You can't, you can't do a goddamn thing over there. <laughs> so, so anyway, well, it was good seeing you and yeah, say hi to you. Bean for me and I whoever will. else is part of your domicile. All right. In Tucson, and see you later. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.